Hey everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Kathy and this is our Let's Get Ready for Fun room by room webinar. The reason I named it Let's Get Ready for Fun is because this time of year tends to be um you know, well, I should say the time of the time of year that's coming up tends to be the time of year that is more relaxed than any other time that we have during the year. There's no holidays really. I mean, sometimes there's, you know, there's graduations, there's lots of parties in June, there's weddings, that kind of thing. But but really, we don't have anything very pressing on us. There's not getting ready for school, there's not getting ready for holidays, there's not you know, like the winter time, which if you're in the north is, you know, kind of like cumbersome with all of the preparation you have to do for just having the stuff that you need. You know, I mean, when we transition from um, winter to summer, to from spring to summer, it's usually, you know, you could just throw on a pair of tennis shoes and a pair of jeans and a short sleeve shirt. You usually have those things out and it's not that difficult but when it gets below zero like in a bam where i am here in new jersey it gets like you know you need that stuff and you need it now and so there's a lot of things that press on us in a lot of different times of the year and this time of year um or the time of year that's coming up i should say is much more relaxed and what happens is we want to enjoy this time but a lot of times what happens is that we feel guilty because the house is such a wreck and we feel like we can't enjoy it. It's too much of a mess to enjoy it. We do, you know, take time aside to make sure that we, um, you know, enjoy things and have fun and stuff. But it's usually with a price. We usually feel some sense of guilt, some sense of um, like, oh, I really shouldn't be doing this. The house is such a wreck, that kind of thing. So, you know, what I want to do here is I want us to set ourselves up for the fun in the summertime. And I, you know, this is something that in case you've been in, in any of my webinars before, we've had webinars where we did, we got ready for the holidays where we got ready for um, the fall. You know, we went from summer to fall, that kind of thing. Um, we had a room by room web webinar where we worked on the house, like one room at a time. Well, this is a little bit different. For one thing, it generally deals with stuff that's in storage, not stuff that's in our regular area. And another thing that's great about what we do here in these webinars is that we have like the foresight to take care of this so that we're setting ourselves up for success. I know all of us have probably been among them where we're in one of those 24 hour stores, you know, buying the Easter gift or the Christmas present or the, you know, um, Valentine card or something like that, like the day of, or that the night before, because we put it off. But the fact is, all of us know that these days are coming. It's not like it's a big surprise and the president got on television or whoever is the ruler in your world, you know, gets on television and on the media and says, all right, tomorrow we're going to declare a state of emergency. We're going to have a day that we give gifts and we have to make sure we have them tomorrow. Like that doesn't happen. We know that th that all of us that it's not going to be an all of a sudden nice weather, but yet we tend to put it off and put it off and put it off, and then you know we set ourselves up for a sucky time, and that's why we're going to do this now. That's why we're going to start now. April is really the perfect time in of the year to begin, so that when June and July rolls around. It's lovely. I do know that there's lots of other people that don't live in the north. And so you might be in an area that is really warm. And so, you know, you don't really have to do the transition thing. So you can use this as a tickler to, you know, revamp your things, right? To maybe trade some things out, to, um, go into your storage area and say, what do I have in here? Right. 
to take care of things that are, you know, never taken care of because of where you live. Okay. So even though you may not have like the seasons, like I'm talking about where it's like, you know, bam, cold, bam, warm, bam, hot, like that kind of thing. Even if you don't live in that kind of environment, like right now, I just, Lorianne just told me San Diego. So yeah, it's like almost always beautiful in San Diego. Right. But still there, there are things that have to be addressed and there are seasons, even though your season may not be um, noticeable in weather it's still noticeable in time. Now, I also know, because I lived in Florida for a while, and that school is, even is very different. Like my kids, they, they had year-round school in Florida. So they had big blocks of time off and big blocks of time on. And that was because the weather was, you know, hot, really, really unbearable in certain sections of the time. It was a whole opposite, you know, genre. But still, even though, There's still ebbs and flows to your life. And if we want to, you know, live our life where we're moving smoothly with those ebbs and flows, then we've got things to address. And so this can absolutely help you too. All right. Okay. So during this um, free webinar, we are going to learn a plan, a plan to transition smoothly from winter to spring or summer and to get ready for fun and how to enjoy the upcoming nice weather at a slow and leisurely pace, knowing that the house is under control. When we know we've got something going on, when we know we have a plan, it's much easier for us to enjoy the time that we have, right? Isn't that true? All right, so we're going to be preparing for a new season. We have to pack stuff up for storage. We have to get rid of excess as we go. So it's going to be out with the old and in with the new, right? Right now we have, you know, a lot of things like um, a lot of things that maybe are so are going to be so unnecessary that come up. And I don't know about you, but, you know, I drive around neighborhoods and see that there's Christmas tree decorations still outside in March, you know? So there's things that have to be done and time really can get away from us. So that's some of the things we're going to deal with today. Now we have a warped perception of time. Anybody that hasn't been with me at all, maybe you haven't heard this. So I just want to explain it a little bit. We think that nothing takes any time at all, or that things take forever. So sometimes we will just volunteer like crazy and say, oh, I could do that. Oh, sure. I'll do that. Oh, wait, what do you need me to do? All right. Well, wait, let me think. No. Yeah, sure. I can do that because that whole wait, let me think that never happens. Who are we kidding? Right? So there's sometimes that We think we can do everything. Somebody will ask us, can you do this for church? Can you do this for the school? Oh, sure. I'll be able to do that. Not because we think that we can do anything. And yet at home, sometimes we'll have a different perception of things and we'll say, oh my God, look at that table. I wish I could get that together. That's going to take me forever. And we think we don't have the time. So we never start it. I can't begin to tell you. How many people on my program have told me that something that they put up for, let me tell you, years, I'm not saying months, weeks, I'm talking about years, that once they realized, all right, or once they got started, right, they just believed me. Sometimes you just got to believe me, right? Once they got started, that they said, oh my God, it took me an hour it took two hours. It took me two days of two hour stints to do something that I had put off for years. But I'm telling you, generally, it's really just within an hour or two that the thing that people thought was going to take them forever to do didn't at all. It took an hour. So we have this word perception of time. So what we need to do is we need to plan and we need to schedule because without that, we see things in that warped way, right? We see things in a way that's like not reality, okay? And so when we realize how we tick, 
it's really easy to take one step in front of the other and then move ahead progressively and with results. Now, this is what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to realize how you tick. I want you to make a decision. I want you to discern, determine a schedule and I want you to stay committed to it. All right. One of the first things you have to do is realize that you don't think like everybody else. And that's fine. But generally, there's two different factions in our society, the right brainers and the left brainers. The right brainers have very little administrative skills hooked up. The left brainers have very little spontaneity hooked up, very little creativity hooked up. And so what happens for us, because the right brainers have so many stigmas that are attached to what they do, we pretend it doesn't exist and we try to do it like the left brainers do. Now, since the left brainers have very few stigmas, they are on time all the time, they get things done, they know how to delegate, they're neat and tidy, there's nothing for them to be embarrassed about, you know, so to speak. So when somebody walks in their front door, so they just go ahead and move along. Plus they're the ones that write the books because they're the ones that can find their pen. So we go and try to be who they are. And the reason that it's never worked for you is because we are not who they are. We don't have to do things their way. There's very few people out there teaching what our way is. There's no teaching on how to be organized. We're just expected to do it. How many of us have heard, why can't you be like your sister? Why can't you get it together? How come you can't do that? You know, because we um, haven't learned. Hello? Because we haven't learned. There's an expectation of understanding that is unfair and unrealistic for getting organized. And so one of the things that I want you to do is realize that You've got a more predominantly right brain thing going on. And because of that, you do things differently. You learn differently. You proceed differently. You internalize things differently. And that's one of the main reasons why every magazine you've ever picked up on the checkout that said, you know, do these six things and you will have, you know, the most organized bedroom or the most great closet, have your kids organized, ready for school and five easy steps. And we picked it up and we look at it and we're like, what? We, we can't get it. Why can't we get it? Because it's written by people who don't think like us and we can't receive from them. So realize how you tick and love it. Okay. Appreciate it. And take my word for this. Okay. You will do and so well working on the way you live life. It will work. It will sink and your life will change things. The things that you've thought will would never be able to happen will be able to happen. Okay. All right. So there's that. Another thing about the making a decision thing, I want you to do it right now, literally, all right? I want you to literally, right now, make a decision. I want you to even maybe write it down. If you can't write it down right now, please write it down later. Write it down. What is your decision? My decision is that I am going to follow a plan to get things done so that I can sincerely enjoy my babies, my lover, my family, my free time, my life. Okay. Whatever it is, I want you to do that so I can thoroughly enjoy it and feel no guilt whatsoever. Okay. All right. Um, I want you to determine a schedule, which is something that we're going to get together on. Okay. And this is something that you need to do is stay committed to it. It's very easy to want to do something and then let it slide by. That's one of the reasons why I want you to write, write it down because it's very easy to forget what it is. Even the things that we really feel are important to us. Life gets in the way, things happen, we get busy. And then two or three weeks later, maybe somebody will some, say to us, wait, well, what happened to that thing? Didn't you tell me that you were 
going to, you know, get whatever it is, right? Whatever New Year's resolution, whatever this, say, say this. Didn't you tell me that you were going to do a program where you were going to get the house cleaned up or something for summer? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah. Because what happened was you forgot. And that's why people who are successful in life write down their goals and look at them. Not because they're so special, but because they remember them. They remember their goals so they're able to stick to them. All right? So there's that. Another thing that's really important during this time is that you have to determine that you're going to say no to a lot of things. One of the hardest things for us to do, it, because we are so fun-loving and so, you know, spontaneous and all of that stuff, um, you know, what is it? Spon slob stands for spontaneous, lovable, lighthearted, no, so slob, spontaneous, lighthearted, optimistic, and beloved, okay? So because we are all of those things, we say yes to everything. Well, if you have a plan to do something and you have something else constantly take precedent over that plan, that plan will never see the light of day. It will never go into fruition. It won't work. So it's okay to say no. You have something going on. You've got to realize that your life is important. What you do at home is, it is the most important thing. You say no to every single person you know. And if you don't work out outside of the home, then you know a day that you did. Or And if you never worked outside of the home, then you know that this is what you would do, okay? You have this job that you go to every day at a certain time. And you leave at a certain time. And during that time, if anyone asks you, can, I, can you do this for me? You say, I'm so sorry, I'll be at work, right? We, we have this warped or this messed up like idea that home isn't as important as work. It's more important than work. It's way more important than work. Nobody ever said when they won the lottery, I'm going to quit home, right? So I want you to just get the mindset that it's okay to say to somebody, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you because I have a, a, a little course that I'm working on at home and I have to see to this first. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do something for somebody at a, a given moment or something, but you want it planned in. The organizationally gifted people are not, people that just fly off, you know, with every wind and every whim that's out there. Oh, can you do this for me? Sure, I will. All right, wait, I need this. All right, I'll be right there. You know what they say? Give me a minute. I got to check my planner, right? That's what they do. And nobody looks at them like, oh my God, that bitch. Or holy mackerel, what a jerk. They, they have to look at their planner. I need them. No, we don't do that. We never do that. We respect that people have lives. And if something is going on in their life, then they're going to have to say no to you. You need to do the same thing. Okay? I know that you, if you're not in my course that you don't have a planner, you never use a planner, and you don't write anything down. So I'm telling you, you need to start doing that. Okay? Get a little, like it could be just one of those little dollar store, um, you know, calendar things that are that look like a checkbook and write stuff down that you have going on okay and the stuff that you plan for your life is the priority all right now our number one obstacle is too much stuff so what we're going to do here is we're going to embrace the fact that if you want to get it together you've got to let go of things now we're going to talk about in this particular training really right now just our winter and summer things that's what we're going to talk about right now all right our winter and summer things so what we're going to do when we're going through them is we're going to make sure that we release things that we don't we don't just put things away that we don't wear we don't want we don't need all right so this has to be something that's in the forefront of your mind all right that your number one obstacle to achieving what you want to at home is that there's too much stuff there. Okay. So number one, I want to talk about what do you keep? 
your seasonal clothes in. Now, I recommend using an apple box, and that's a little picture of an apple box there. You can get them in a produce store. They um, one box. They're kind of like an uh, one box that fits within another box. They have handles. They stack beautifully. And I want to tell you something that I moved. I just moved recently, and I moved from you know my four bedroom house into a one bedroom apartment. And in my attic, of course, I had to get rid of tons of stuff. I wasn't taking, you know, I took one box of um, Christmas things. I had, you know, could you imagine how many I had? I lived there for 14 years and I was married for 26 and, you know, I had five kids. So, you know, I had a lot of Christmas stuff. I wasn't taking all of that with me here. So what I ended up with was a lot of empty bins. Okay. And so I figured, I'm going to pack those bins. Why would I not pack the bins? I've got them. So every bin that I had, I used for packing. When I moved into this house, I don't have any storage. Now, I do have storage. There is storage in the basement of this apartment building that I live in. But I don't want anything that has to be stored somewhere that I've got to go and get it. If it doesn't fit in my area that I live, I don't want it. Now, I'm not saying that's what you have to do. Believe me. I'm just saying that that's what I want to do. Like my sister Maria, she and my sister Tina, they live in a home that they will live in until the day they die. Maria might possibly move, but let's just, I mean, why do I do that, right? I always go into more explanation than is necessary. But anyway, my family basically live in homes that they will live in forever, okay? So if that's the case for you, you keep your all of your Christmas things and all of that. You have room for it. Like, um, I, I, I love do, I love doing like crafty kind of things. Right. And I just saw something that I loved so much that out of, a uh, old, uh, entertainment center, one of those small ones, somebody made a little child's kitchen set. So it looked like, so they made it where there was a sink in there and the doors on the side were the refrigerator and freezer. They put a little window in the back. It was lovely. Now I'm looking at this and I said to myself, oh, I would love to have that for, for the baby. I'd love to have that for Lily. And you know, I'm having another grandchild now who's coming up. So I thought, oh, wouldn't that be great? Now, if I had my house, then I would absolutely be starting on it right now. I would make that little thing and I would set it up somewhere. And so there's things that you can do and you can't do based on what goes, what's going on in your life. In my life, it's not available. I don't have the room and I don't care. If I was in a place where that was like my homestead, so to speak, that's a whole nother story. This doesn't give you the right though to hoard you know, to keep things that are unnecessary. I'm telling you that regardless of the amount of space that you have or how long you're going to stay there or what its purpose is, regardless of that, if you have more than you need, you need more than you want is necessary, um, more than you use, it affects your life in a spiritual way that can be measured by happiness honestly. Okay. So while my sister Maria is by no means a minimalist, she really does have only the things that she needs, loves, and uses in her home. So that is something that, you know, you've, you've got to kind of like, hold on to. All right. I was talking about the apple boxes. Oh, I know. I just wanted to make sure I didn't want anybody to feel like, oh, my God, Kathy says that the best thing to do is to get rid of stuff. I don't want to be around what she says. I don't have to do that. No, you have to get a, get rid of stuff that doesn't fit in your home. You don't use it. You don't love it. Doesn't enhance your life is broken, um, is stained, um, doesn't fit you. That kind of things you have to get rid of. So. That's what I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure that you understood that, all right? So my decision was, I don't want anything in storage. I only want what I need and can use. And if I have anything that has to be stored, I want it to fit in the space that I live. So what I did was, I took out my Christmas stuff that was in a bin, everything that were in bins that was in my home here that I packed to come here. And I said, all right, well, these are things that could be stored. I'll put them in the bins. I'll tell you what, the amount of space those bins take up are atrocious. Uh, 
I put everything from a, one of those big Rubbermaid bins in an Apple box and had room. Not only that, but the Apple box takes up so much more space than those big ass bins do. So if you don't have problems with water, you know, the, where you have to have that plastic, then I tell you the freaking Apple box is the way to go. Now, I believe that pears are packed in the same way. Tomatoes aren't. Tomatoes have a lid, but they're not the same. And they don't, they definitely don't hold as much. All right. Tomato boxes are good for other things, but not for your storage. Okay. And they're free. Lorian said, re boxes versus tubs. I have numerous tubs already and some are color coded. I figured just a few more. And after dejunking, I would have enough. I should keep them. Yes. Um, Lorian, if they fit easily and happily in the space that you live in, absolutely keep them yes if you don't have them yet say you don't have any um any you know bins or anything like that and um you're going to get things for storage and you don't have a problem with moisture that you need the um the plastic then that's what i recommend the apple boxes but if you already have them absolutely keep them if they fit nicely in your area. If they don't fit nicely in your area, like I got rid of all of mine because they, they took up so much space. I donated them to, um, to a local, uh, Habitat for Humanity. So, um, you know, it's all about what works in your life. Okay. All right. So, um, I want you to be selective and that's exactly what I was talking about before. Now, what we're going to be selective about, of course, are the seasonal clothes that we are taking out and putting back. The seasonal clothes that we're taking out at this period in time that I'm speaking to you are the summer clothes. But whatever season it is when you're listening to this, whatever season it is that you're taking them out, when you take them out, don't just put them away. Look at them. Did you wear that last year? Do you like it? Does it fit you? Is it ripped? Would you even give it away to somebody? You know, I did this one time where I had a closet. It was a double closet and all of the clothes in that closet were mine. And I said, you know, and I had been completely organized by the time. I mean, I was Susie homemaker to the nines, right? You can come over anytime. Pie was baking. What do you need? House was immaculate. All right. I was like, you know, I was a stay-at-home mom at that time. Actually, I did have a um a one of those like MLM businesses, but whatever. All right, I was in I was, you know, on the top of my game. And I decided, you know, let me go through my closet because, you know, there's some things in there that I never wear. So I went to, you know, do the dejunking that we do regularly. People who are organi organizationally gifted dejunk on a regular basis. That's why it stays dejunk. That's why it stays not cluttered. So when I took stuff out of the closet, I decided, all right, let me put some things in the, in the goodwill that I don't wear. I mean, that I, yeah, stuff that I don't wear anymore. And what happened was there was stuff in there that I wouldn't even put in goodwill, like stuff that maybe had a stain on it or had a button missing or the zipper was broken or was so outdated that it was like from, you know, a different era. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I have things in here that I wouldn't even give away. So, you know, think about it, okay? We sometimes we hold on to things subconsciously just because they fit. My closet wasn't bursting at the seams. Everything fit in there nicely. I just kept things that I wasn't wearing and then I realized that they weren't even things that I would give to, you know, Salvation Army, right? So really, really, I want you to take a look at the things that you're keeping, the stuff that you're taking out and you're putting away. All right. You're going to have to establish a storage area if you don't have one right now. And so wherever it is that you're getting, because I mean, you know what, this is what happens. We end up saying, I know I have that other sandal. Where is it? Because we don't have everything together. So that's what we want to do now. We're going to, we're going to set ourselves up so that when the fall and winter come back around, you have got that going on because of what you're doing now. Okay. And then when the summertime is over, 
you will have that place established. So you're going to establish a storage area. And if you live in a place that is, you know, small and you don't have that much storage, then you're going to have two things to do. You know, determine, well, where would be good places for it? Maybe you can add a shelf um, above a closet shelf that is, you know, higher than you would normally go to, but you could put storage in. Maybe there is places that you could put things under dressers or in the back of closets or that kind of thing. And the other thing is, if you can't, then you have too much stuff. Honey, it has to fit in your living space and it has to fit in the drawers and the closets that you have. If it doesn't, then you either have to move to a bigger place or you've got to get rid of stuff. And if that is kind of like hurting you a little bit in your mind where you're thinking, oh my God, I can't do that. Please take my word for this, okay? It is across the board happening for everyone in the world. Not only those who are organizationally challenged, those who are organizationally gifted and have it together and have got a place for everything and label their scissors and label where everything freaking is in their homes. Those people, when they took a look and said, you know what, I have a lot of stuff in my closets and in my drawers that I never wear and never use. I'm going to get rid of them. And when they did that, they realized that they became happier. So if the people that live in tremendous order and know where their pens are, are always on time, can find their keys at a drop of a hat, you know, never even have to look for their purse. Those people, if they can find happiness or, or more, if they can find that they are, they have more joy and more enjoyment in their life because they don't have the things in their homes that they don't need then what the heck do you think it will do for people who are like us, who live behind the eight ball almost 24 seven, because, you know, they can't even get into a draw without having to move something. And they can't even put away anything that they've just washed because there's no room in those drawers. You know, the thing is, is one of the things about the things that we wear is that we only wear what is in the top layer. We only wear the top layer of clothes anyway. We wear the same things over and over again. I just read an article from a woman who decided to wear a uniform to work. She bought 10 silk blouses and 10 black sh slacks. And that's what she wears to work. She said, you know, men do it. They wear suits. They've got something every day. It's easy. It's um, stress-free. And it doesn't have any stigma attached to it where you have to, you know, do one up on the next girl or something. It's just, it is what it is. And it made her life so much happier. So if you're like a clothes horse, then you kind of just have to decide, right? It really is your decision. And it's fine if your decision is, I'm sorry. I want to have 60 billion purses, even though I don't have room for them, then that's your privilege, of course. But if your life isn't happy and if you're embarrassed about your home and you don't have people over and you really have a lot of dreams and goals in your life that just cannot get off the ground, it's because of your 60 billion purses. Okay, lover girl? It's because of that. That's why. So just make a decision, all right? And, you know, decide for you all right, and not the stuff. All right. The next thing I want you to do is to get a binder. All right. I want you to get a one inch binder or two inch binder. I forget. What do we use? Somebody could you somebody tell me what we use a one or two inch binder. I think it's a two inch binder. Get a two inch binder. Make a divider that says storage and then label each box that you put the clothes in that you have been very selective about. Right. And write down the contents of each box and label it. And by labeling it, I mean you want to write um, Kathy, you know, Kathy S1, Kathy Summer Clothes 1 is what that would stand for. And then everything that's in there, Kathy Summer, Kathy S2, everything that's in the second box. And, and then you label that box. Now, if you have a significant other you're doing this for and children, 
then you're going to have to just multiply that by the amount of people that you've got going on in your world. Okay. So you do that and then you make a note where that box is stored so that you don't have to, you know, when the time comes that you say, Oh no, I need my boots. You know, say it's a, you know, crazy. So snowstorm that happens in, um, September, right. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I need my boots. And you just go to your binder, you look and you say, okay, the boots are in W1 and it is in the attic by the um, back window. And so W1 is winter one, you go in the attic. I mean, it makes you feel like who the heck you are. I'm telling you, it is a wonderful feeling when your kids say, Ma, I have to go to a class trip and we need to bring a, a towel for the pool it's an indoor pool and this is december right and you say just get a beach towel because you're going to need a big one it's in the attic wait give me a second you open your binder it's in the attic and it's in it's it's right by the window by mary's house next door right by that window okay and it's in a box that's labeled s2 and then there you go it's beautiful and it can happen okay be selective that we already talked about that. Okay. Went into that extensively. I don't have to do that again. Remember if it doesn't fit you, if it's broken. Now we all know that there are certain things that we say, but you know what? I'm going to get into those jeans. I'm, I'm not going to get rid of them. Then if they're in your drawer, turn them inside out. Okay. And put them where, you know, wherever you're going to put them so that you know that the next time you do the, the change out, if those jeans are still inside out, you haven't worn them. And so you can't get rid of them still. All right. You know, if you have the room, hang on to them. If you didn't get, if you didn't get into those jeans by the next season, donate them, just get rid of them. When you need what you need, you'll get it. Okay release what it is that you have so that your hands could be open to receive what you need. And you can do the same thing with your clothes in the closet. Um, you can now I, now with the clothes in the closet, if it's something that doesn't fit you fine, you could turn it inside out because you can't wear it anyway. But if it's something that you just never wear, it fits you, you like it, but you never wear it. It's like, man, I, I had this dress for two seasons now. I still haven't worn it, but you love the dress. Then put a piece of masking tape on the, the little um, tag, the tag on the dress and write today's the day's date on it. And then this way, you'll know that, you know, oh my gosh, this dress has been in my closet for two years and I still haven't worn it. The tag is still on there because you'll rip it off if you wear it. A lot of people like to do the, I think these are the organizationally gifted people. They do the thing where they take the hanger and they turn it backwards. Now here's one of those things where I'm talking about how we tick. That doesn't work for us because if say somebody says, um, you know, say somebody invites you to the opera, right? And you're like so excited. You're going to go to the Met and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to the opera. And you go in your closet and you say, what should I wear? You're going to start pulling stuff out. Like you're, you know, kind of a little bit crazy. And you're going to, you're, if there's something that's backwards on the hanger, you're not going to take that hanger out. You're just going to take the dress off of the hanger while it's still hanging on the pole. So now you're going to have all these things on your bed and, you know, trying to decide what you're going to wear, even though that thing that you haven't worn for so long, you think, well, maybe I'll wear it tonight. You're going to rip it out of the closet. And so now all of your efforts of turning that thing backwards is completely futile. It doesn't work. And now when you put it back, it's just going to be another one of those things that you're going to have to remember to put it backwards. You're not going to do that. So that doesn't work for people like us. All right. Do the tag thing. So be selective. Okay, something that we have to deal with this um, this time of year is the outside. There was lots of stuff that we had to do on the outside that we don't have to do now. So there may be, you know, um, things that are out there that need to get put away that don't have, like maybe snow shovels, right? That kind of thing. Um, maybe you have a wood burning stove and 
Now, I'm not saying that you still don't burn wood or whatever it is that you do and you have that area outside, but, um, you know, it's going to be slowing down now. So it's time that you can go out there and kind of like spruce up that area. You will also want to go outside and, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Another thing, too, is your entranceway. Your entrance way, definitely, this is the week for that, okay? Because this is going to be a little bit of a series. We're going to do another webinar um, for the next step because it's a lot for one. So um, the the um, front porch or the area mudroom, any area that you walk into, it usually takes a beating in the winter months, right? So that's what I want you to do this week, okay? Besides the whole dragging out your summer things or your you know, your lighter weight clothes and getting rid of now your, um, you know, heavier things. Now in my part of the world, I still have my coats out. Cause I mean, even though it was a beautiful day today, I wore my coat, the baby wore her coat with her hood up. So it's not like I don't have my coat anymore, but I don't need my, um, my, snow boots. You know, I don't need my scarves anymore. I don't need my mittens. There's lots of stuff that are, I don't need my long underwear, right? My, the things that I wear underneath the clothes when I need to be really warm. There's a lot of stuff that you can begin to, you know, get rid of. So don't tell yourself the lie that, oh my God, it's still cold here. I still need this. I mean, you know, granted, if you're in like maybe what Canada, Maine, I'm, I'm sure that Maybe it is still, you know, really cold where you might, you know, you might get a snowfall possibly, but you know, okay, you know, and I want you to really think about it and be, you know, mindful of it. And then your, um, your area where you're, um, you walk in and out, that's something I want you to do this week as well. I want you to take a look there. What can you get rid of? What can you put away into storage? What can you, um, clean up? right? Is there something that you maybe you would like to do to that room right now? Like make it feel like spring, right? That'll make you feel happy on the inside too. All right. Is it, you know, did, have you had a lot of tracking in because of the salt and all of the stuff that comes in and out with this time of year? So that's something. And, and if you are somebody that lives um, in a beautiful area of the world, beautiful weather area of the world all the time. This is a wonderful time to use this as a tickler to take a look at your entranceway and ask yourself, what can I do here to make it a little bit more special, to clean it up, to make it feel welcoming, to make me feel happy to walk in the front door. Now, remember another great thing about this time of year that we're working on is that it's not like Christmas time of year where we're getting ready for the holidays where we have to um, say, well, all right, we can only do what's absolutely necessary because we have people coming over. We have so many responsibilities. We can really take our time and, you know, work on this so that um, we can get it done have ourselves have the enjoyable time of allowing ourselves the time off to enjoy life while we're working on it. And when by the time September comes rolling around again, we are so wonderfully set up for the next part of the year. When we know how stressful it is when September comes up, it's kind of like we get hit with a tornado that starts right in September. If you have kids, school starts, and then there's Halloween if you if there's that in your in your world, and then there's Thanksgiving if you're in the states, and then there's Christmas and there's New Year's and there's all kinds of things that just hit us, bam, 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 and there's the cold weather. So this is a wonderful time that we don't have to do any like. Um, stashing, right? Because some of the things that we do during the holiday time of year is like a controlled stash and dash. We don't have to do that now. So this can be really beautifully thorough. So another thing that we have to think about is what happens in the nice weather, right? There's a lot of things that we have to prepare for. Now there's some of the, the some things that we're not going to have to do now because maybe some of us don't even have grass yet, right? But it's something that we have to think about and something that we have to prepare for. We have outdoor, um, you know, parties maybe, or where we hang out outside much more often. We have weeds that we have to get rid of. We have plantings maybe, or um, something that has to get done with the, our lawns and 
all of that. So we want to, um, you know, think about that. Do you have any um, outdoor lawn furniture that you're going to bring outside that needs to be, you know, revamped a little bit? Do you have to replace it? Do you have to, um, you know, get some things so that they're in the forefront because maybe your garage is a wreck and you haven't gotten to those things in so many years. Like maybe you have a backyard and you'd love to use it, but you've never gotten there. Make the plan so that you can do it. If it's buried in your garage, make the plan so that you can get to it. I'm not saying it's time to clean up your garage. I'm saying it's time to get the stuff that you need so that you can enjoy the upcoming weather. See what I mean? Okay, so there's that. Oh, wait, and the picture in the center, that's me when I was going on a road trip somewhere. I don't know. I was putting oil in my car. And God knows why they took my picture of putting oil in the car. I wasn't a tidy tutor at the time. But that's what we did. And so, um, anyway, there, you know, that's another thing is that we want to be mindful of what are the fun things I'm going to be able to do? What are the things I need to do? Like your car is going to be part of that. Does it need an oil change? Does it need a tune up? Is it a wreck on the inside? A lot of times during this time of year, because it's cold, we just don't, you know, do what we have to do on the inside of our cars and they're a wreck. So that could be another like sort of like a commitment. I'm going to keep up with my car. Okay. All right. Something I want to make sure I hit home is that it's not about perfect. Okay. It's about happy. We don't have to hold anybody else's standards, but our own. And there's somebody that's in my TTI group and she is working full time. And sometimes she has to get up at like, you know, I don't know. I just read her last post. It was on our Facebook group. It was like 4 a.m. And she works sometimes seven days a week and she has two little kids. And, you know, she was talking about, you know, how hard it is. And this is the thing I want you to remember, okay? It's never been a time in history that men did it all. When, when it was a traditional family where the woman stayed home and the man went to work, right? When that was the norm, men didn't do it all. The person that was the major breadwinner, they didn't wash their clothes. They didn't cook their food. They didn't clean the house. Okay. So I want you to be easy on yourself. And if that's the case for you, where you're the breadwinner, so is your husband, or you, ha or maybe you don't have a husband, you know, whatever your situation is that you're outside of the house working and you have a household and children or just a household. Okay. Um, there has to be, um, provisions made for this. Because there, there is not enough time in the day. Um, you are, you know, um, you are permitted to let things go because they have to. If you can afford it, and even if you can't, and what by that what I mean is that you can still pay your bills and eat, all right? If you can still pay your bills and eat, and do without some of the, you know, um, extracurricular things that you do, like maybe go out to eat a few times, um, have a, you know, major vacation, that kind of thing. I want you to really think about the necessity of having someone help at home because it's, it is a necessity. It's just as much a necessity as you have to have gas for work. When you get a job, right, you, you determine, all right, well, I have this job. It pays this much, but there's daycare. I have a specific, you know, um, attire that I have to wear. It's this many miles away from home. So there's this much gas, there's tolls, and I have to get lunch. So I, I, if I eat out once a week, that's fine. The rest of the time, I'm going to have to get lunch and make it. All of those things have to be um, a part of your decision of taking that job or making it work. It's necessary to have help, have somebody come and help at home. All right. Um, maybe some one of the things you can do is drop off clothes at a laundry mat and pick them up. If you only, if you wash, say you have a washer and dryer at home and you have clothes that you need to wash. If you wash your bedding, your sheets, 
and your towels and your jeans yourself, but everything else goes to the laundromat and just drop them off and pick them up. The amount is very minimal financially and it saves you so much time. So there's, and, and then think about things like crock pot meals, right? Um, planning your menu. Now we do all of this in TTU and T, you know, all in Tidy Tutu University. We do all of this. All right. That you plan your menus accordingly, you know, realize that you're not Susie freaking homemaker. All right. You don't even want to be Susie homemaker, but I'm telling you what, remember I called myself that before it happens and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. It's a beautiful thing. So, all right, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Cause I think I'm rambling. All right. So we're going to do an assignment for next week. I want you to think about these three things. What causes you to struggle the most? All right. What causes you the most stress and embarrassment? And what would make you the most happy to see change? Okay. I want you to write this down. All right. Now we have a room by room Facebook group that is, I don't think I have the link here to it. I don't believe I have a slide for the link. That would be the very best. If you email it to me, it may be, you know, another week before I get to it and it won't, it just won't work. It, it's, it's, it just won't work. So if you, but if you get it on the room by room Facebook group, then we'll be able to see it and you'll have it to look at. And if you, you know, write it down and you lose it, you'll be able to go to Facebook and say, all right, where did I write that down? You go to your, where you are and you'll find it. All right. Um, I want you to, and then we'll have accountability and we're working together here. All right. You're not alone. I want you to do this. So the two, the things that you have to do physically is the getting out of the, um, your, you know, the clothes for the, the, that you had for the summer and stuff like that. The, the warmer clothes, the warmer weather clothes. Um, if you live in an area of the world that is always nice, you know, you're going to, you know, take a look at what you've got. All right. And your storage area that has something to do with the next part of the, um, calendar that we're coming to. All right. Um, really, really be diligent and selective about what you keep, what you, what you don't keep. You know, think about what you've got going on, the space that you have, what fits in that space, what doesn't. And, you know, honey, get rid of what doesn't fit. It's making you unhappy. Another thing that we're doing is um, thinking about the outside. All right. What do you have to do to spruce it up and the front entrance way? And then there's this. OK, this is something that you're going to think about for next week. All right. What causes you to struggle the most? What causes you the most stress and embarrassment? And what would make you the most happy to see change? All right. So that's it for our um, let's get ready for fun room by room webinar. Um, I am going to look and see if anybody has any questions and ask you if you do, please, um, will you write them in? And if you want me to unmute you, I would be happy to do that. I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that it was something that inspired you and will help you to, you know, move forward. You obviously signed up for this webinar because it's something that's a need in your life. And so um, I know that you know, implementing these things will make you happy. All right. So Linda said, we wear 20% of our wardrobe, 80% of the time. It's absolutely true. Um, Alice said, thank you, Kathy. Amazing talk. The great ideas about how to enjoy our homes and live more simply and mindfully. Thank you, Alice. Okay. And I can't read. Oh, that's because it's an email. So I don't know what your name is. It's just an email address. And you said, do you have to be members to be part of the room by room groups? No, room by room is a free Facebook group. Let's see. Um, Lyra said, do you donate the winter clothes that you didn't wear now, even though people are looking for summer clothes? Yeah. I mean, a lot of places take them. Like if it's a consignment shop, you know, or if it's a store like that's got very small space, I know that in the town that I lived in, it was, um, a, there was a little angel's attic, it was called. They don't take things unless they're seasonal, but there's plenty. I think the Salvation Armies take them all the time. And if you live in the States, you can call 
um, the Salvation Army, you can call Vietnam Vets, you can call Lupus Foundation. There's lots of people that will pick them up right in your front door. So you don't even have to go anywhere. So you can just box them up, call them. A lot of times, though, they have to be scheduled. So if this is something that you need to get done at a specific time, you need to call them ASAP, okay, so that they can, they'll get there for you. All right. Ella said, thank you so much. Loved it. Oh, good. I'm so happy. Um, Mary said, thank you. So helpful. Awesome. Um, Rose said, where will this be posted, Kathy? Will it be available to other people um, other than to, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a free webinar to anybody that wanted to be on it. And it will, right now, there is a strip on tidy to, the tidytutor.com that has to register for it or something like that. So you'll see it. You just scroll on um, tidytutor.com and you'll see where here. Let's go there real quickly. Okay, so here's Tidy Tutor. Scroll down and there it is. See, free webinar series, get instant access. So this is where it will be. You'll have to put in your name and email to get the access to what we just did but otherwise it's free and that's that all right okay uh, let's see charlotte said um i'm getting rid of clothes as we speak but a boom charlotte awesome all right susan said while i was listening to this webinar i took a bunch of winter clothes out of the closet i never wear and took all the ones i wear and put them in a small closet all together progress and wouldn't have happened without you. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Um, I love the idea um, with putting what you have in a binder. I have a crawl space and have things in bins and they are everywhere. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. And in Tidy Tutor University, we use the binder for, um, you know, a heck of a lot more. And, you know, if it's something that you're interested in, it's a great program. Okay, um, I don't do Facebook. Is there another way to get this information? Thanks for all you do. Well, the only reason that I use Facebook is because they have a platform that's already set up. And it's I tried to do it on my website, and it was not as sophisticated. So you can, I mean, you can do Facebook and just not be involved in anything else but this, kind of like you joined a club. So you can set up a very simple Facebook um, profile, not put, I used to say to people that you could just do a fictitious one, but now they're coming down on that where they go up to people and they say, wait, look, your name can't be Judy Jetson. So who really are you? Or you're, you're not Wilma Flintstone. We want only real people on here because, you know, they don't want stalkers or anything like that. So um, if you just do a very simple profile, you don't have to post anything ever on anything except for our group. And, you know, you'll be able to get in there. It's not like so necessary. You don't have to be in the Facebook group for that. But it is nice for support. Um, that That's what it's, you know, it's really, really great for support. And you'll still get the recording as an email. You know, I have some people who are part of my Tidy Tutor University that are not involved in Facebook and just and benefit greatly. So it isn't necessary, but it is a nice thing. All right. Um let's see. I am I am oh I am Geetha. I did I say your name right? Geetha? It's G E E T H A. Is it Getha? Geth I would I would assume Geetha. I have one question. How to keep with routine? Um, well, I have an entire course that kind of addresses that it is, it, we, we go through it in four hours. And then I also have a support group where we meet once a week for an hour. It's a question that you're ans asking that can't be answered in, you know, one answer and can't be covered in one webinar. I'm so sorry, but, um, you know, what we did will definitely give you help. Um, my course will also. So there's that. And then believe me, it's not like I'm saying, oh, well, you're not paying me for, for my course, so I'm not telling you. No, that's not the case at all. It's just more information than I could possibly cover right now. I will have this edited and up on, on the tidytutor.com page. I'm going to... Um, sign out now again. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. And I'll see you on the inside of where we're on the inside of. Take care.